Yeah, then just tell them to run some more. YT, YT24, you know your sister put me up on Brent. She put me up on dude. I've been bumping his shit ever since then. Hell yeah. That dude got some good ass music, man, to be from overseas like that. Got some good ass music, man. Where everybody at? Where everybody at, man? They must have getting their notification as usual. Which kind of suck. What's up with YouTube? Why they be uh, trying to hold us back? Trying to slow us down? Damn. Um, Mike Zuckerberg or whoever else running this shit. Damn. I'm the only motherfucker who lives be in the middle of a live. Next thing I know, my shit gone. Hey, Daddy Lolo, I'm going to be in the streets today, bro, in case you want to get up with me. Uh, I'm going to be out there with, with my lo my homies, well-known Kale Steppers. We're going through the city, putting up the flyers, leaving them in the stores. We got plenty of flyers. These are just the ones that, that's done right now. The rest of them printing out. We're printing out uh, plenty of Plenty of flyers all through the city. It will be plenty of flyers of this protest throughout Chicago. I'm going to uh, make sure that I speed through this show so I can get out there and get this stuff uh, in the right hands and to people that's out and moving so that they can know uh, how we feel about the situation. You know, doing a little footwork before the footwork. You dig what I'm saying? Now, when a lot of people be talking all this bullshit, uh, weirdo in the flowers, uh, bozo, when I go out today and I'm riding all through the city, every part of it, and I'm passing out this shit. Am I going to get a cash app? Am I thinking about a cash app? Will cash app see me? Will YouTube see me? Huh? Man, I already brought it up several times when I was standing in the street with a billboard of this man. Did I get a cash app then? See, some of this stuff, when y'all talk about this cash app shit, you can't take away from a person's true intentions with overshadowing it with what you think about somebody that you don't even fucking know. You ain't never heard about me complaining about nobody getting anything because I don't give a fuck. You feel me? Simple as that. Simple as that. It ain't, it ain't, uh, you know, no shit. I'm going to put my time all in. I get it, though. Anyway, uh, let me see this right here. Is this it? Let me go there. I think it was this one. I think it was this one. Was it this one? Uh, I don't. Uh, I do understand. Uh, that could be the stuff situation. What do we? Uh, so, I hope that my brother is back, uh, I commend him for his courage uh, uh, to, 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 to even think about stepping forward. Uh, shout out to Ms. Winbush coming up in here once again, debunking lies and uh, false narratives. Uh, I had a lot of 
like skim through the conversation because I'm about to jump off there. Yeah. But you know, we can't leave without that kid. <laughs> Go to work. I guess you could say this is when the jealousy started. You know what it was. You know what it was. So, oh, oh. Dana double agent. Dana doing this. Dana doing that. <laughs> Somebody said, well, Dana, why don't you tell who did Jane do? Who's up? Don't you ask your boy Dabowski to tell you who I told him that Jane Doe's up. Why he never put it on his channel? Mm -hmm. Why he never put it on his channel? You don't see them? Then, then he you don't say claim we don't want no dumb. And I don't care what another motherfucker say. You can't hear nothing? Can y'all hear what's going on? So that was like five months ago. I guess that's when the the uh, narrative began that I worked for Don Russell. If anything kills over 10 million What's this? people coming at that one, they like that. Hold on. Is this it? I'm going to be on Dana G Live today, and I was going to be talking about what happened at the table. A lot of times you have a lot of things that come up and come out, and it, it gets mistreated, you know, Throw all kind of ways, get messed up, throwed out there, and a lot of it is not what it seemed to be. And sometimes people could say partial of something and make something big out of it when it's not even that. But when we was at the table, I'm going to start from the beginning to the end. I know some people probably say this is not needed, but some things are needed to clear some things, and some things is just better than yet. And before this lady even gets started, I want to let her know that uh, in part you told the truth, in part you, you gave an assumption. I don't even know which person you was at the table, but I'm going to let you continue on. It's left alone. Um, well, because my brother was unclear about a lot of things that happened that day, um, I shed some light to some things that he did not know. Um, when we was when we was at court and everything went on with them with court and everything that happened at court for Rob, um, we was told as our Kelly supporters, those that support our Kelly to meet at McDonald's or Rocky Road McDonald's, I said this before. And um we all went there, um, uh, well me and my husband and Shorty, I forgot the rest of her name. She was there and her cousin and we was waiting for DJ Tyson because we was um meeting up with DJ Tyson and um uh, we all was gonna sit down and talk and break bread and stuff like that. And so DJ Tyson was saying, you know, talking to someone and telling them, Hey, look, I have people that's at the Rocky Road, you know, um, McDonalds and I need to go meet them. I need to meet my people. And so they informed him to tell them to come talking. to the other restaurant. What was the restaurant name? Uh Tavern on the Tavern on the Rush. Yeah, Tavern, Tavern on the Rush. And so I was asking my husband because he's right here. And so we want Tell him I said, Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, Dana. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. We got to get our basketball game, man. <laughs> and so, um, I 
and so he um so so my husband was like he was tired and we had just got off the plane we hadn't gotten no rest or anything but he was like okay well i'm here with you i'm here to support you so we could go over there so we went over there and like i said and said before i can repeat everything word for word when we got there dr rogers was not upstairs with us at the time not to say that no, she was not there no. but i didn't see her at that moment when we first got up there but the sisters was so the sisters were uh, uh, Sharon, uh, Sandra wasn't at the table with us. Like, hey, won't we all come together and we all sit at the same table? Okay. Um, have very seen, didn't see the sisters were like once or twice, maybe on Dr. Rogers' page, so I knew it was the sisters. And so, we, there was like, we all could sit at the same table. So we all wind up at the same table. Um, like I said, at the time, didn't see Dr. Rogers. I'm, I'm gonna be straight up, I'm gonna be straight up with everything. Everything that happened. I'm gonna just, is it okay? Yeah. I'm just be real with everything. Okay. Well, pretty out there. So we sit in there. In the midst of us sitting there, everybody just sitting there. We, you know, it's like it's like three different groups. You got the Bolski on one end of the table, at the beginning of the table, at that end. You have Dr. Rogers and the sisters. They sitting apart from you know they're not sitting apart, but across from each other. With your bad in the middle of the sisters. You got Dr. Rogers on the other side, and um, some people that sitting next to Dr. Rogers. Okay. And then you got the cameraman who had nobody's permission to record the whole table. See, that's what I'm saying. Let, let's let's start with that part. Uh, the cameraman did have permission to record. The cameraman was there with somebody. Uh, that same somebody is the same somebody that provided a, a limousine. Uh, we had an agenda going on somewhere in the midst of uh, what what was already going on, and uh, the cameraman didn't record anybody that didn't want to be recorded. Trust me. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. I tell one of the young ladies, the, the bloggers, that I think she'd appreciate that she not be film recorded because it was being done without the consent of the individuals that were sitting at the table. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are we here? Okay. So, um, so we sit in there, and so. Um, you have at the end of the table, which is, cause we just came, so they try to make room for us. So it's like we at the table, but it's just like everybody can't really sit. Like if, if we was sitting in it, we wouldn't have been able to like really sit down and put out where I was and my husband probably would. But like some of the people couldn't really like put the food on the table if they would have eaten because that's how much, you know, they were just standing chairs. And so we didn't eat. Okay, Kevin. Um, Kevin Terrell, DJ. You might didn't eat, but I ate. T Baby ate. Uh, three one two ate. Mrs. April ate, and several other people uh, ate. I know. Trust me. He didn't eat. I didn't eat. My husband didn't eat. Uh, um, it's a lot of us that just didn't eat. Okay. So for them saying. So when you say you didn't eat, you with your husband. If you wanted to eat, you should have ate. I spent two hundred and fifty dollars. I didn't eat two hundred and fifty dollars worth of food. Trust me. The last supper and all this other kind of stuff, we ain't even get no supper. But anyway, that that's besides the thought. So you got T Lazy. I guess that's her name. T Lazy or yeah. T Lazy, T Lazy. You didn't get no food or nothing. You just came in being nosy the whole damn time, huh? Yeah, it's we lazy. have um Fidel. They at the end of the table, they sit by each other. You got Shorty and her cousin by each other. You got me and my, well, my husband right there. Okay, so all of us, we talking. So you got three different types of groups at one table, and nobody's really communicating with each other until the both you say, let's pray. Nobody was introduced. Nobody was introduced. It was just like, People just were stoked together and nobody communicating. Like, it was just like, it was I. It was really. See, uh, just because uh, we came somewhere, right? Me, keep in mind, both ends of the table was together. You just didn't know that because we didn't act like we knew each other like that. But both ends of the table was together. We just didn't act like we knew each other. Don't nobody know who the fuck up in the midst of this shit. 
Not only that, man, congregating ain't always some shit you want to do. We came here just to eat and show support for the event. That's it. We ain't really come to uh, kumbaya with strangers and all that. You know, be polite, uh, break bread, free kills. I'm gone. You go to your car, go to my car. I'll see y'all the next time. I don't know you like that. Ain't nobody. Uh, we all strangers. We all strangers. Everybody that know each other was in the car with each other and came there together. Right. Standoff is an eye because nobody was communicating with each other. At that point, and at that point, you have the end of the table that's not willing to communicate with the middle of the table or the head of the table because they wasn't introduced and they didn't know who who was. Uh, you could believe that if you want to. You could believe that if you want to. Six people in there came together. Six of us came together. So uh, we ain't we ain't got to let you know if we know each other or not, man. This ain't no uh, club. Show your ID and who know who and what's your name, man. Don't nobody. That's that wherever you from, shit. That ain't how, motherfucker, that ain't how I move, shit. They didn't know if you was the op or they didn't know if you was the friend. So you got a bunch of people at the table that's not really dealing with each other like they should have, like if you would have been. Why you ain't just dealing with the people that you came with like everybody else dealing with the people that they came with? What the fuck? Together. Right. Okay. So that, I was just. Hold on, can I say something real quick? Uh, the lady that gave the the luncheon, Dottie, um, I do know that she just wanted everybody to come together in the name of Rob. I do yeah. know that. Right, oh. right. That's all it's supposed to be. Come together, let's eat after the court date. That's where, we, where people that came to support Kells will be at. I ain't know that we have to be in that motherfucking uh, kumbaya and breaking introduction and all this shit, bro. I don't do that goofball shit. Okay, so, so a lot of this, well, she didn't know. It doesn't make no sense for us all to be against each other, and we all supposed to stay for. Daddy was supposed to say that. I think Daddy's. I'm not. We all ain't together. We all ain't together. Just because we at the table together don't make us all together. Just because we all like R. Kelly together don't make us all together. Just because we share uh, the same point of views on YouTube don't make us all together. I, I'm not with nobody. The only team I'm on is the Enterprise. That's it. I'm not on nobody team. I'm not on nobody team. And that's what people lose me at with this team shit. I'm not, I'm not trying to be on nobody team. Do you think I would be at the table talking about some team shit with some motherfuckers I don't even know? I don't go to war with strangers. I don't, I don't get on the battlefield. I don't know what you capable of, but I'm going to go to war with you. It don't work like that. It don't work like that. Shit, get the fuck out of here said that yeah and, and so that's why the sister was like when everybody considers the team we can make one okay dr rogers i i don't care if she hear it or don't hear it she was very standoff she didn't want to be bothered with nobody and nobody wanted to be bothered with her straight up she just was a straight outcast and even when 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 the both start praying dr rogers did not even get into the prayer to hold hand so that was that was a big thing on its own, period. But that was just for the pray over the food, okay? So when the conversation got up about you, Daniel, now let me get to the meat of the matter. When the conversation got up about you, at first Dr. Mm-hmm. Rogers wasn't at the table, Shabazz Sh- started saying about what happened with y'all at court. And he said, yeah, Dana J. So then when he said Dana J, everybody that was against Dana J started talking about Dana J. Okay? Yeah, because he, Dana J, he messy. He, he's about a bunch of confusion. And he's about drama. And he's about this. And he's a this and this and that. But all this that came from Hollywood, next. So they start saying stuff about Dana. So I said, where you got that from? The Hollywood Next? I say, um, I say, because Hollywood Next, is, she is a snake. And she's not right. And I said, she don't like Dana. And I start saying, and I said to my husband, and I said this out loud, and my husband is right here. I said, y'all got to talk about Dana. I'm about to get up from this table. You, you should have got up anyway because you did bad shit. You just taking room and breathing over other people's shit. Being nosy. 
and I'm about to go because I'm not going to sit here and listen to y'all talk against Dana. And DJ Tyson says, I don't see nothing wrong with Dana. I don't know why everybody always coming against Dana. What's up with y'all being against Dana? I'm not understanding this. So for all this stuff to be happening with you and DJ Tyson right now, it's a call to me. Even, even, even Don Dabowski was saying that he didn't have nothing against nobody. He ain't had nothing against you. And he didn't understand what was going on and he ain't even know. He was like, I ain't know these people was against Rob. I ain't know these people was against Dana. I wouldn't have never sat at this table. So for all this to happen now, I'm trying to figure out who really is the middle man. Okay. Uh, that's a good question. Let me tell you how this came about, because you are totally right. When asked about Dana at the table, I said, I don't know that man. Uh, and I still don't know that man. When asked about Shabash, I didn't even know who, which one was Shabash. I was so busy entertaining my people that I came with, uh, that I knew uh, through YouTube and had conversations with. I was worried about talking to them. I didn't even know what Shabazz was at the table until the next day. Uh, but how this came about, I interviewed Don Russell. And when I interviewed Don Russell, the psycho paranoia man just came first with a phone call. Told me if I interview the man, I'm going to lose cash apps. He's going to snatch my pages down and everything that you saw. You can't punk me. You can't tell me who to talk to. Okay? So I interviewed the man. Now, when I interview somebody, I'm interviewing them for the public to make their own decision because I will make mine. I'm not here to persuade you to do anything but I vote R. Kelly not guilty. Okay? All right? Now, I have interviewed the twins. I have interviewed Ashanti McGee, ex-husband, Dunn Russell, uh, Bozo, I've interviewed several others in this debacle. Some of them I can't think of their name right offhand. Kip. Why nobody say I worked it for any of them? Why they didn't say I worked it for Jen and Lindsay when I interviewed them? Why they didn't say I worked for Darlene April when I interviewed them? Why they didn't say I worked for Kip when I interviewed them? Why they didn't say I worked for uh, Ashanti McGee husband when I interviewed them? Why was why was I only threatened for interviewing Don Russell? Why did I lose my page for interviewing Don Russell? Why is it that I work for somebody off an interview? Okay? Then the man calls Tyson because I told him if he continued to play with me, this was on the 4th of March, I said, if you continue to play with me on this phone, I'm going to see you tomorrow. My right hand, the guy. I said, man, you keep talking to me about what I'm going to lose if I interview this dude and uh, cash apps and shit, bro. When I see you tomorrow, you can just tell me that shit to my face. He said it wasn't a problem. Came to court, got his ass on the plane, went back to the crib. Called Tyson in the night, told Tyson uh, that uh, he shouldn't fuck with me and some more shit and some more shit and how he planned on going at me. And Tyson told him, that wouldn't be a good idea. And the bitch ass nigga continue to do it simply because I interviewed somebody he's envious of. You feel me? So two people was missing from that equation that, that was there, which is Vidal Ross and T Lazy. And they was the ones, and I'm about to be honest, and I'm about to be true, they was the ones trying to convince me to turn against you and don't talk to you and don't deal with you because you was an op, and how, how can you, how can somebody deal with you if you, um, matter of fact, I'm just about to say, so with that said, you got to know about your boy Dana. Your boy Dana ain't right, because if he's going to be, um, for Rob uh, or Kelly, why is he talking to the aunt? That's not cool. He said, I felt like I listened to Dana and I was with Dana. But then when Dana started being with the aunt, coming against, I can't tell where you got that from, Hollywood next. Yeah, I talked to Hollywood. Yeah, Hollywood, my girl. I said, yeah, y'all listening to what Hollywood have to say. Y'all listening to what Hollywood have to say. I said, because she, I heard what she said. 
And I start typing her, and it blocked me. I said, yeah, you getting a lot of your stuff from Hollywood. He said, yeah, she talked to me, we talked on her, but she knows, she knows, she got her stuff together. She got her stuff, she got, uh, did you talk to your boy, Daniel? Did you, I bet you went to call Daniel and told I said, because I need to, I need to make, she's going to look at every video to find out what you're talking about. He said, yeah, go do it. He said, because I'm telling you, your boy is the op. I'm telling you, your boy is on the up. Now, all this gossiping, Rumor back and foreign shit that this lady giving you sit at the table uh, that I sit at, and I don't know this lady at all. Uh, all this information she giving you, none of it has anything to do with me. That's right. And this is why look, none of it got anything to do with me. And this is why I don't fuck with strangers. This is why I'm not at the table talking to you. I'm kicking it with them. I'm kicking it with the people I came with. So you can't be quoting me and running back to tell somebody else some shit. And when you ask me something, obviously I told you uh, not enough because you ain't talking about me. I told you I don't know that nigga and I don't give a fuck about him. You know, show me. I said, and let me make the decision and let me make that judge. I said, but really, to be honest with you, I don't care what nobody show me. I don't care what nobody see. I'm not coming against him unless there's something that comes to my spirit that he ain't right. That's how the conversation went when it came down about you. And, and when, when, when Shabazz was talking about you, Dr. Rogers was uh -huh, nodding her head and everything. But for the only thing she said, that Dr. Rogers said, we, we got Dana, we gonna deal with him. We got it. But Shabazz, T. Lazy, and, um, Vidal, they was the ones with the conversation. DJ Tyson, he stood up for you at the table. Now, what he do behind your back, I don't know. But he stood up for you at the table in several times. Several times. The boss get the boss get really was in his own world, to be honest with you. Am I right, baby? He was in his own world and he was talking about the bulk in this and the bulk in that. And that's his whole thing about is the indictment, the indictment, the indictment. That's his whole conversation at the table was about the indictment. It wasn't about Wasn't about you. Dana J. Yep. Never been about you, cocksucker. Never been about you. Ever. Ever. Like I said plenty of times, you don't mean shit to your own mother. It ain't never been about you. With all that shit she said, she just told you what I'm about. And I wasn't getting no cash ass when I was sitting at the table talking about the indictment. That's all he was talking about. That's all he was talking about. Yep, that's all I'm still talking about. That's all I'm still talking about. To Uncle Rob is free. For real. Stop trying to sidetrack me, distract me. I interview whoever I want to interview. Fuck you. With no further ado, Enterprise, where you at, where you at? Come on in to the Chitty Chat Chat. Hey, 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 
Okay. Let's go over this article together real quick, y'all. Then you tell me what you think about it. Fans seek records on R. Kelly's former South Suburban mansion. Federal agents are seeking real estate documents related to R&B singer R. Kelly, former South Suburban mansion. In a subpoena to the Cook County recorder of these dated April 21st, 2020, federal prosecutors from the Eastern District of New York saw all records related to the Olympia Field estate, including the land records, property deeds, and home ownership between 1997 and 2013. Public records show that is the time frame Robert Kelly owned the home. That will be from 1997 to 2013. Once again, y'all. Last year, his attorney said the singer was living at the Trump Tower, located next to the Chicago River, as Kelly was charged with a uh, slew of crimes including sexual abuse of a minor. Currently, he is housed at the Metropolitan Center in downtown Chicago as he awaits multiple trials. The public release of the subpoena come as prosecutors in the Eastern District of New York office charged three people with trying to bribe, intimidate, or threaten Kelly's alleged victims, including sitting fire to the vehicle outside of one of them home. I think they're just looking for records so they can establish he owned the property, where some of the conduct is alleged they have taken, said Kelly's attorney, Stephen Greenberg. If there's any financial mismanagement on that property, it will fall on his management team. He never handled his own money. Yeah. 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 All right. Let me see where we at with it. It's a whole lot of shit to talk about. A whole lot of shit to talk about. It really is. I'm trying to speed the shit up because I need the daylight to make sure I get all these flies out. Hold on. What was this? Advertising is spread. Hold on. And I see the whole connection. Yes, yes. One thing to them, you gotta come through me. That day I felt so bad. He dog told Sylvia that day. He cussed folks Sylvia out. Is it because Sylvia got more money than him? Understand to a lie that he knew was a lie because he couldn't find his own lie. Is it because Sylvia's husband works? And Sylvia is an upstanding working person, and he's trying to scam off of R. Kelly's name, and the girl that he stayed with looked like a grade eight junkie? Is that what it is? Is it the one that came to court? And, and because of you, <clears throat> because let me tell you, and I'm his subscribers, they are the worst liars in the world. They they according him and grown man got the worst subscribers in the motherfucking world. Because one bitch on there, three, four bitch told Gavin Durrell that you was jealous of him. I said, this motherfucker got to be crazy. Why was <laughs> Well, they were supposed to be out there and they supposed to have been having breakfast in a, 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 on the strip. Hold on, let me see. And they went out. She made like she was afraid of her life. Let me see. And then it's a crazy cut. Okay, here we go. So. Where is it at? Let me see. Let me see. Y'all might have heard this. I just want to see how how all the rumor of I work for Don Russell, all that shit, RSK Enterprise, all that shit. I don't own RSK Enterprise. I own the word, the enterprise. That's it. I 
And I said to myself, I said, they need to stop that bullshit. I said, cause all of them in this shit together and they lying. I am so glad and I want to say, and I know Don K is there. I want to let him know that that ain't a motherfucking thing we can watch about me. I might be of age, but that shit that he went on there and print, I saw it. I know every fucking thing that's going on. And I know a lot of things that I can't say. You and this idiot bounce uh, conspiracy theories off each other, and people in the chat eat that shit up. Did you hear that, though? What? What's that? I mean, I'm about to go get my check. <laughs> Something that I work hard for, that I don't got to sit back. And ask y'all for cash apps so I can take it and go eat with it instead of putting it back into the channel. No, this is your. Get your goofy ass out of here. Motherfucker, give you something you go eat with, you go shop with, you go do what the fuck you want with it. Get your ass out of here. The basket, the basket really was in his own world, to be honest with you. Am I right, babe? He was in his own world, and he was talking about the bulk in this and the bulk in that, and that's his whole thing about is the indictment, the indictment, the indictment. That's his whole conversation at the table was about the indictment. It wasn't about Dana J. Period, bitch. Period. You've been riding a nigga coattail ever since I interviewed Don Russell, and I had every right to interview anybody I want to, trying to punk me or any of that shit won't fucking work. You can't fucking punk Debo. You ain't seen Debo on Friday getting punked. It ain't gonna happen, nigga. Don't even play with me like that. I don't ever think you can tell me anything to do. You better go tell them bastards what to do. Go tell them bastards you ain't want to take care of. Tell them what to do. You can't tell Debo what to do. Ever. Now, uh, let's get to it, y'all. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Uh, let's start right here. Speaking about injustice, injustice is something like I said plenty of times is going on all around the world. Right. And the core of a lot of this inappropriate uh, misjustice that's going on in the courtroom is coming from politicians. Be careful who you vote for. There will be an election held here uh, for the Kim Fox, Pat O'Brien. I'm looking forward to working with the Pat O'Brien campaign. Now, with that being said, let's look at how politicians sometimes make the wrong decisions and uh, we skim over that and find some type of way to still have respect for them just because they black. Never in a million years I would have thought that they were going to charge me for sales murder. I never talked to no detective, no police officer, no DA, nobody. Just arrested and then charged. Arrested and charged, that's it. Was the first time you saw Kamala Harris in person the day that the verdict was issued? She showed up at the two most pivotal times in this first trial and me being convicted and me being sentenced. She wanted to be present for a celebration of a, of a conviction. That's what it felt like, a that's celebration? A celebration, that's what it felt like. The reactions I get when I tell people my story is, they say it's, it's the worst nightmare. You know, it's the closest thing to dying. Jamal, I'm gonna read you a, a quote real quick. The job of a progressive prosecutor is to look out for those overlooked, to speak up for those whose voices aren't being heard, to see and address the causes of crime, not just their consequences, and to shine a light on the inequality and unfairness that lead to injustice. It is to recognize that not everyone needs punishment, that what many need, quite obviously, is help. Kamala Harris wrote that uh, in her book, The Truths We Hold. Uh, does that sound consistent with the kind of, with, with the brand of justice that you saw administered by offices that she was running? It definitely sounds like Kamala Harris right now as a senator. But at the time of her being the head district attorney of San Francisco, that is almost polar opposite of what I felt and what our community felt in San Francisco. 
So Jamal, where are we? Uh, right now we are in Sunnydale Projects, where I was born and raised at. Now, this isn't a place that you, you'll want to bring outsiders into and a place that they don't want to go. This ain't a place that feels comfortable. It feels like you might get robbed, you might get shot. The police were keeping files on you and your brothers and other people who were living in Sunnydale from a very young age. They are, had already had me labeled because I'm in this community as a potential gang member, potential killer, potential drug dealer. You gotta wake up to the fact that, you know, things are set up against us. There is a conspiracy. Yes. It happened to you. Exactly. There it's is proven a big, in court. Absolutely. Places like this have been developed for predominantly African American people to not be able to succeed beyond it. Yeah. What did you know about Kamala Harris? What did you know about San Francisco having a, a black DA. Nobody in the hood ever worried or focused on the DA position in general, but people did focus on it just a tad bit that it was black and feeling like, okay, this black lady in office, Kamala Harris, she was gonna understand where we come from, you know, and have more of a, a sympathetic way of prosecuting people that come from our communities who have. Yeah. Kamala Harris, Kim Fox, that man. Innocent man. Then came to see the lynching of an innocent man. Yep. He can't get that time back. Could have died while he was in there and ain't even committed a motherfucking crime. And that's why when people be out here judging people for convictions on their records and things of that nature, sometimes you have to keep in mind, some, sometimes people just plead guilty just to get out. And that's a fact. That's a fact. Let's dig deeper into the wormhole though. And Ms. Darlene, this be for me and you made up. So yes, you heard me mention your, your, your name, which was nothing bad being said. So, so I want to clear that up real quick because I don't want Ms. Darlene zapping out on me. Um, I have nothing but respect for, men, for, for Ms. Darlene April. She's a good lady. Um, me and her cleared the air. But you heard what I said. RSK Enterprise is ran by Don Russell. I got it on my community chat. RSK Enterprise ran by Don Russell. Then I even got the joint where he said Team RSK had a meeting today. So, so I mean, so y'all go look at it. I'm putting it all together for y'all. So if Don Russell, now you putting all kind of bullshit together. This is this four five months ago. You putting all this bullshit together that ain't even true. And look how he lay it out for you. So, yeah, and he got RSK Enterprise. So, you know, you're about to lay the bullshit down, and it's all a lie. So, run RSK Enterprise. And I want y'all to look at this. If Don Russell runs RSK Enterprise, the same man that's going from every platform talking about, I can help Rob. I got what it takes to help Rob, but I don't want to give it to his lawyers. That might have been the best thing he could have do because he might have to use that shit for himself. The same man. The same man that put the fake uh, cease and desist letter with the fake notary. So you already know what's coming uh, from the state uh, DA in New York. You already predicted it five months ago, huh? Just coincidentally, you just knew. You just knew. Huh? Okay. Could it be because four, five months ago, you went to New York? 
and sent it to, to, to New York and the Faith Rogers lawyer, and they used that to aid to help Rob stay locked up in New York and not let him out. So this is the same man. Listen, the same man that's connected. So if he runs RSK Enterprise, right, and the Bolsky say they are the enterprise, y'all don't see the connection there? It ain't no connection, you dumb idiot fuck. RSK Enterprise is one thing. The Enterprise is another. You dumb, ignorant, fat fucker. And the boss said, I only talked to Don Russell twice. How did I get the number? Kevin Terrell said I gave it to him. But Kevin Terrell said, oh, I didn't know Don Russell. But then he backtracked. And then I caught you lying. I asked uh, him, could I interview him? At that time, I was, you know, wanted to interview everybody. I done talked off the phone to a lot of these people in this shit and uh, online. So I wanted to talk to Dunn. I asked him for the number. He texted Dunn. I called him. Bam. It was that simple, bro. It wasn't no jumping through no hula hoop shit, bro. Um, way back when, when he said, I got somebody in R. Kelly camp, but I said Rob about to kill himself in the studio. The only person that was there that he know was Don Russell. So peep, peep it. When Don Russell appeared on the Boski's channel. Right. That's when all the bullshit started. Look how you just spinning the whole everything you're saying has no facts. Where's your receipts, Mr. Receipt Man? Then, after you do all this slander to a person's reputation, uh, to my commentary and etc., you never go back and backtrack any of it. Initially, you were saying me and DJ Tyson sent this girl car on fire, and y'all were some crusaders for that. You and Leela. Next thing we know, that's in the motion. Y'all are here to everything before it come down the pipe. Remember, I noticed the turn then. I just never said nothing. And if you notice, Kevin was so glued. So then Kevin was saying something slick ever since then. And I said, yo, do I got to come out and really go there? He's like, no, 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 no. Peace, peace, peace. But then they waited till they thought was the right time to strike, not knowing that I'm waiting for their strike so I can counter strike. So I'm just going to ask you. If the How is it? That we waiting to strike you and the lady already told you we didn't give a fuck about you. You inserted yourself. You a dick rider, bro. You a clout chaser. You clout chasing off FBG Duck. You clout chasing off Kills, Kanika Jenkins, Floyd Mayweather, John Lewis, uh, DJ Tyson, and myself. See you. John Russell is the least common denominator and Dana don't like Don Russell for what he's doing to cut Kells. And Don Russell don't like me because I'm standing in the way of his bag. And then on top of that, Don Russell's portraying to be R. Kelly in all these other places. And I'm stopping all that because I'm putting it out there of what's going on. Why wouldn't you do what you got to do to get Dana out the way? Because he's stopping everything you're trying to do. So whatever way you do it, you come on platforms and say, that fuck nigga Dana J. He don't know nothing. Da, 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 da. So I know y'all saying, so what do Cash got to do with this? Cash was messing with Don first. And then she started messing with Angelo when Angelo took up for it in New York at the screening. When allegedly people were supposed to be jumping on her and Angelo took up for her. So then, as y'all heard on my live and before, uh, but I'm sorry, on Phases Live, when she got on there, Angelo called. She got on the phone real quick. Then she came on my line and said, Angelo got a stronghold on me. It's something about Angelo. He got a stronghold on me. And I'm just like, yo, fuck it. But I mean, fuck. I mean, if you're scared, say you're scared. Y'all ain't going to let Angelo or Dawn do nothing to you. So at that point, it switches again. She come back and apologize to Dawn, but then she attacked Angelo. So now... When the boss getting them call herself attacking me, look who pops their head up. Jasmine. Look who else pops their head up. Cash. 
oh, Dana wasn't around. Dana don't know. Dana don't this. Dana don't that. But Jasmine, I took you to, well, I introduced you to Rob. Yeah. The same way the four, five other women, I say you uh, introduced them to Rob before pressuring them or raping them as well. Facts. Articles out there from 2019 allegedly uh, that, well, alleging that you are sodomized, raped, and uh, abused several women. I don't know if this is true. I don't know if this is true. However, I know that that's what they saying about you okay okay now where we at with make sure you be in chicago uh from the 20th to the 22nd you never know what you might see in chicago August 20th to the 22nd, be there. You never know what you might see. It's your boy Kells. The things you see in Chicago. Are you find where you are? Left, left, left. Oh, oh. That's the best. <laughs> Love y'all. Peace. Be there, y'all. Be there. Be there. When I woke up today, switching the subject, I woke up today and saw some crazy ass shit out my window. Yeah, man, damn deers out gang banging. Leela, right outside of Chicago. Damn deers out there gang banging, y'all. The deer out there gang banging. And them deers was gang banging, Joyce. They was gang banging. Said tripping this shit. Let's go here, though. What is this around? What is this? Shout out to T-Baby for the information loaded into the program. Oh, yeah, check this out. Don't raise your voice at me. Don't, don't raise me. No, you can't. No, you can't raise your voice to me. Don't do it, buddy. Don't give me a kill me. Thank you. Don't do it, buddy. What you gonna do, Oh. Hey, buddy. Get the fuck off of me. Get the... You want to throw some punches, buddy? You ready? You want no punches? You want man up? Put that gun down. Put it down, bitch. No, no, no. Get off of me. I ain't getting nothing wrong. Leave me alone. What are you doing? Get away from me. I haven't done anything wrong. You're attacking me. You're under arrest. For what? You're under arrest. For what? No. Disorderly conduct. No, I'm not under arrest for disorderly conduct. You're under arrest now for resistance. You are a real piece of work, buddy. I didn't do anything wrong. This is ridiculous. Yeah, dude could have put it on him when he got him on the ground. Some of these police, man, need to learn how to respect people as men. For real. 
Some of them need, just need to learn how to respect people is mean. That's all. That's all. It ain't it ain't hard. It ain't it ain't it ain't different. Yeah, it ain't hard, it ain't difficult. It really ain't. We know the industry is fucking over artists all the time. Uh, that is why a lot of them uh, die broke. Tupac, et cetera, et cetera, have to go through these uh, arguments with high-profile uh, scam artists like Clyde Davis and Tommy Matolo and things of that nature for their royalties or simply just to have a roof over their head. After 30 years of working and 20 years of working, uh, millions of dollars being made for these same companies that leave them out there stranded. Yeah. Never went to. This ain't for all you video rappers that go rent it. This is real. So are rappers really just fronting? I would say it's, it's, it's more broke rappers than rich rappers. For the most part, rappers are not millionaires. They have this bar, this sort of expectation that's been set extremely high and it's unrealistic. There are very few Jay-Z's, very few Eminem's. Frequently, the person that you see bling blinging doesn't have as much money as he would like other people to think. So whether they're shipping platinum, gold, or wood, many rappers feel obliged to live the player lifestyle, even if it's beyond their means. A lot of people get caught up in the glitz and glamour, want to show off more than they have. They're spending money before they get it. I know of rappers who, the second they got their deals, the first thing they did was went and got their rapper starter kit. Before they even paid their rent, I gotta go get my jewels, my pendant, my bracelet. Some people feel like that's the way they have to look before the fans will accept them. I got the jewelry and all that, but that's the ghetto fabulous. That's what the crowd want. If you don't have it, you're looking at somebody like they whack or something, but that's not the way it should be, but that's the way we kind of seeing it. The more and more it grow where people have the big jewelry on, the cars or whatever, you ain't gonna be riding your video on a Pinto. So even when a hot new talent strikes gold, I got a million dollars out of this deal. Yeah. A day in a life can quickly turn that million back into 50 cents. Rockefeller CEO Damon Dash breaks it down. This is a realistic look at what a million dollars is to a the first time rapper. First of all, it's tax half. Yeah, that's five hundred thousand right there in there. Boom. So now all you got is five hundred thousand left. The first thing. So yeah, man, these people out here signing their life away, and a lot of them when they sign their life away, uh, they exploit them, exploit them to make music that get other motherfuckers shot. Especially here in Chicago, they out here making this uh, diss and dead people, family members stuff, which is why uh, the murder rate is high. Mrs. Down South, how you been? How you been, Mrs. Down South? <laughs> yeah. And uh, when they giving these little dudes all this money and they going to put their friends on in the street and provoking violence and things of that nature. Then the other label go get the other artist and pump him up and get him money and get him uh, to get his guys armed. And these people stand right around each other uh, here in Chicago, which is why you've been seeing the fallout of some of the uh, results of that. Now, stupidity is something that is a uh, common trait. I just showed it several times from the bozo. However, this guy right here was just as stupid. Metro police arrest a man they say goaded a homeless man into a stunt for $6, then laughed as that man lay dying on the ground. Police say the homeless man, Larry Connor, approached 28-year-old Keonti Jones and asked him for money on West Owens Avenue on June 20th. Jones reportedly offered him six bucks to do a backflip and then streamed it on social media. This is part of that video showing Connor first doing a cartwheel. We will not show you the remainder of this video, but when Connor attempted the flip, he landed on his head and neck. The video goes on to show that a group of bystanders and Jones looked on laughing while Connor lay dying. Jones can also be heard telling onlookers not to call for help for nearly 10 minutes. Connor died from a spinal injury 10 days later. Jones was arrested after a member of the Connor family contacted police.
dying while Connor lay dying. Jones can also be heard telling. Right. Sit there and laughed and all that goofball last shit while the man was dying. 70 year old man. That shit was ridiculous, bro. That shit was ridiculous. And uh, ain't nothing cool about having somebody that's without uh, exploit themselves to get some, some money, man. Straight up and down. Now, let's go here and revisit this. Well, truckloads of personal items worth hundreds of thousands of dollars all gone. Johns Creek police tell us two, R, two of R&B artist R. Kelly's homes were hit hard by a burglar. Well, tonight, investigators are still counting the value of what was stolen and trying to find the man who they say is behind the high dollar heist. Well, Fox 5's Jacqueline Schultz joins us live from Johns Creek tonight. And Jacqueline, police say the burglary suspect was actually employed by R. Kelly? Yeah, police tell me that Alfonso Walker did home repairs and pool repairs for R. Kelly's home. So he did have access and did have a way to get into this rental home behind me, which I'm told by neighbors was used for parties. Now, police say that while R. Kelly was out of town on tour, Alfonso Walker went into R. Kelly's homes and helped himself to everything the musician owned. Multi-million dollar home and a second one that were basically cleaned out. A bling studded hoodie, a slot machine, R. Kelly memorabilia. These are the items police say were taken from the R&B superstars to Johns Creek homes by a man hired to do house repairs for the singer, Alfonso Walker, also known as Doc. Police say while R. Kelly was out of town on tour, Walker hired moving crews to clean out the homes of furniture. Neighbors just said, it just seemed like that he was moving to us, and that's what they told us, is that Mr. Kelly was moving. Then police say Walker sold the furniture and pocketed the cash. Investigators say on November 26th, the maid went to R. Kelly's mansion and main home and found the home cleaned out. Called police, who went to his rental property near McGinnis Ferry Road and also found plenty of furniture gone. First statement I believe he made to an investigator was that Mr. Kelly owed him money, um, he's said things as I'm being set up. Detectives tell me they interviewed Walker several times by phone and says the Lawrenceville based man told them he was traveling. Police say he was supposed to turn himself in on Tuesday. He never did. Captain Chris Byers says he's tracked down two people who bought R. Kelly's things. And they believe that they were legitimately buying Mr. Kelly's stuff that he was legitimately selling. But investigators say they have no idea how many people bought things belonging to the R&B star. He says R. Kelly wants all his things back. Yeah. Yeah. Now you can see how this man got in this situation. Everybody around him was out for themselves, stealing and acting like some chickens with their head cut off. Let's take this time to add Alfonso Walker to a people of interest column. Alfonso Walker has been added to the people of interest column. His picture will be coming soon. He might just make it to the dog head column. Now check this out. For those of you that don't know. From wood pulp to pig rectum, do you know what you are actually eating? Here are 10 examples of foods that are not what they might seem. Number 10, prime meat. The prime cut meats that smaller restaurants and corporations sell are one of the biggest complaints that high-end chefs and physicians make. That's because prime cut suggests that it is a single cut of the best meat from the animal. But this isn't the case in many restaurants. Actually, what if I told you they chop up all the leftover meat and glue it back together? Does the word transglutaminase ring a bell? This is the name for the meat glue they use to glue the low quality meat back together to make you think that you're getting a full piece. This is more than a lie. This is just disgusting. Besides the fact that it is using the worst tiny cuts of meat, it's made from ammonia, the stuff used in fertilizers and oven cleaners. They try to fight back by claiming it kills E. coli, which should not be something we should be worried about being on meat anyway, justifying making people unknowingly eat ammonia just so they can pass off scrap meat does not seem ethical in the least. Be very careful where you eat your steak. 
See, this is why being a vegetarian seems like a safer option, or maybe seafood. Number nine, imitation crab, or maybe not seafood. For one, crustaceans feed off the worst possible debris on the bottom of the ocean. The only nastier creature is shrimp. This stuff they eat doesn't magically disappear when they are caught and cooked either. There's still stuff in it that we eat secondhand. Nevertheless, it's expensive to buy fresh crab and shrimp, but you can get crab cakes and other delicacies at the grocery store for a pretty good price. Why? It's usually because it's fake under the guise of imitation crab meat. Imitation crab meat is made from the remains of other fish that are mushed together and injected into a mold. They mince and mince random fish, whatever they can get their hands on, until it turns into the same texture as crab. It is then created into a paste that is frozen and then shaved into crab-like flakes. To make it taste like crab, they just add flavor and paint it to look like crab. So next time you go for some cheap crab, remember that it's probably beaten, frozen, shaved, and painted fish remains. I kind of like imitation crab, but I'm not really a fan of this process. But it still tastes good, so if you're okay with this, then go right ahead. Number eight, Parmesan cheese. Parmesan cheese is delicious, especially real, authentic Parmesan cheese. But did you know that companies will usually lie about what's in Parmesan? The FDA regulations make it legal to sell fake Parmesan cheese. This is some scary stuff. There are two huge deal breakers with Parmesan. One is grated Parmesan in the shaker. Most of the time, cellulose and mold inhibitor chemicals are added so it won't clump. Cellulose, not cellulite, that's just an after effect. Cellulose comes from ground up wood pulp and is considered harmless and organic matter. They usually add two to 4% cellulose, but the FDA doesn't restrict it. In fact, some has been proven to carry 20% cellulose. That's a lot of cellulose on your pasta. The saddest part is this is just allowed in the United States. Parmesan cheese legally means the kind of cheese that comes from Parma, Italy. But in the US, you can call it Parmesan when it's just dehydrated, grated mozzarella. This is like the Kobe beef of cheeses. Most of the time when you get Parmesan, it's not Parmesan. It's cellulose and a mixture of cheap cheeses. Darn it. Number seven, egg substitute. This one is a little different. No one knows what it is, but many believe that it's a great substitute for people with egg allergies. But really, it's still just eggs. They take mostly egg whites, fresh, frozen, or powdered, and add other ingredients. But not much. They actually just contain 99% egg whites. There's not actually much substituting going on. It might be easier for people who don't want to go to the trouble dealing with eggshells and yolks slipping everywhere, etc. In reality, it is called egg substitute because of that 1% that's just artificial coloring, salt, onion powder, and who knows what else. Why? Why would they just flavor egg whites? Egg substitute is kind of misleading and should be for people with egg allergies who need a substitute. It shouldn't be just eggs. Maybe it's substituting something else. Is it the bottle substituting for the shell? Bottom line is this isn't egg substitute. It's usually just expensive eggs. Number six, artificial calamari. This is said to be an urban legend, and all legends stem from some element of truth, no matter how small. This may or may not be true, but it is interesting enough to share. It focuses on imitation calamari. It began when someone saw a box of artificial calamari at a pig farm. When asked what it was, someone said that it was pig bung or pig rectum. If you see a picture of bung, you'll notice that it looks very similar to calamari when fried. It's not that uncommon, and many say it's really tasty. I don't know about you, but if I want calamari, that means I do not want a hog's bung. Word spread like wildfire, and everyone started accusing restaurants of selling bung as calamari. This would be illegal, and since not much was ever officially spoken after that, it wouldn't surprise me if the silence was to avoid trouble. The story is that the reason the man didn't speak up was because his girlfriend didn't want his name being associated with such a subject as a hog's rear end. How embarrassing. But this doesn't really matter since we eat all kinds of pig parts anyway. We really don't care about bung man, but what we do care about is the calamari we've been eating and everyone trying to trick us into eating things we didn't ask for. Number five, maple syrup. 
Maple syrup is tasty, and aside from natural sugar, it has little ill effects on our body. However, what if you found out that most maple syrup you buy is not maple syrup at all? Maple syrup is delicious, but what are you actually buying? The main ingredients in maple syrup are water, high fructose corn syrup, caramel coloring, and other chemicals. You're usually not eating fresh Canadian syrup from the tree. Now it has all kinds of ingredients that are far from natural and blended with all kinds of artificial flavors like butter and bacon. This is a product where you should definitely check the label. They aren't legally allowed to lie there. Actually, they are in some cases, but I think we're clear as far as maple syrup goes. High fructose corn syrup is just awful, and adding chemicals to food is beyond me. But this is our world, people. You have to look hard to find companies who are willing to stick the maple syrup gathering thingy in the trees and wait patiently. They whip up a batch of their own fake syrup, and it's good enough. Number four, chocolate candy. One of the worst ones ever. Fake chocolate. This is unconstitutional by every means, but companies are faking us out by giving us cocoa, chocolatey substances, chocolate-flavored candy, and other even worse substitutes for chocolate. Now you may not know the difference between cocoa and chocolate, but the FDA knows the difference. They have 15 different subcategories under cacao products, but they only have eight different types of chocolate products. So what the heck are they talking about? Cocoa butter is actually a form of chocolate liqueur. It is the fatty part of the cacao bean, and it's also what white chocolate is made out of. But there is no cocoa powder or cocoa solids in it. But to legally qualify as chocolate under the FDA, the product must contain cocoa and cocoa butter. Milk chocolate is a chocolate made with liqueur, dairy, and sugar. If you want to know if something is real chocolate, then it must say chocolate liqueur, cocoa, and cocoa butter. Others will just have vegetable oil and cocoa. Real chocolate uses cocoa butter as its oil, so that's how you know you are eating the real thing. But the real obvious red flag that you are eating something that is trying to be something else is chocolate flavored. Number three, olive oil. Olive oil is a lucrative industry, but unfortunately it's full of scam artists. Up to 90% of the olive oils on the market are fake tampered with oxidized omega-6 vegetable oils that use sunflower oil or peanut oil. There are even some Italian imports that are fake, which is a shame considering all of the pure olive oil in Italy, which many times actually comes from Spain and then is rebottled as Italian, so you don't even know what you're getting anymore. Olive oil doesn't have a long shelf life and it's a lot more expensive to make and harvest than peanut oil, so substitutes are often used to save money. This is especially true when imports are shipped as the boat ride can cut the shelf life in half. An unknown danger from these fake olive oils is allergies. People with sunflower oil or peanut allergies would never think that their olive oil would kill them. These fake olive oils can be found in restaurants and grocery stores labeled olive oil. It's hard to spot the real stuff, but legend says if you get just one taste of the real stuff, you'll never be able to taste another drop of the fake stuff without cringing. This is a product worth splurging on to get the real thing. Number two, fish. The most common fraud as far as fish is concerned is the blatant lie that the fish is wild and freshly caught when it was definitely farmed, which is okay if you're supporting sustainability, but another thing is just the lie as to what kind of fish you're being sold. Red snapper is one of the most expensive fish that you can buy. It tastes great and is caught in the wild, but most of the time the red snapper you order isn't red snapper. Most likely it's tilapia imported for a cheap save. Studies show that 9 out of 10 times, red snapper sellers are lying. There's only one way to avoid this. Buy locally. Now this isn't easy, but it isn't likely that the restaurant has a real red snapper if you can't get it locally anyway. Shrimp has a similar problem. Shrimp are often poorly farmed, cleaned, and just gross most of the time. They are farmed in wastelands full of chemicals and dumps. Shrimp farming is also one of the most common under-the-table slave labor industries around the world. If you want to get delicious fresh shrimp, you have to go to the Golden Isles off the Georgia coast. Just trust me. In 2015... Be careful what you eat. Be careful what you put into your body. Hey, basic mom, I thought about you and I. Taking off in this. This side you have.
have a gull wing door, or completely different from that side of the car. Take a look at this. You've got a glass floor. And then this here is a floating passenger seat. How mad is that? Completely floating. All right. This is for when you want to be driven around. You can either have someone drive you or the car will drive itself and you are in this little cocoon of relaxation. Take a look at this. You've got an espresso coffee maker in the car. That's cool. And then you've got massage seats as well. And they're focused on really high-end materials. They've got the speakers integrated in the wood, the watch here. This brand is based in Paris, the fashion capital of the world. So they're concentrating on high-end fashion elements, haute couture, like these feathers in the back. Now, let me show you the other side of the car. Each side has their purpose. And this car is completely asymmetrical. This is 1400 horsepower, zero to 100 in 3.7 seconds. They know that in future, not everyone wants to be driven around. Sometimes you still want to drive. It's also made for the track. There's a button here to move the seat forward. Get into position, hold that down, and it will go into drive. See the D there. This is the new company, DS Automobiles, and this is called the XE Tense. There's no roof, so I've got an umbrella here in London with me today. All right, we're ready. Are you ready? I'm gonna take it for a drive. Seatbelts. Okay, all buckled up. Oh my God. <laughs> Woo. All right. Literally sitting on a glass panel, I think. I don't know if it's glass, but it's see through. Oh my god. Yeah? Hello? Yeah, that's nice. This is Mr. Due Process himself. About to hit these streets and get these flags out, y'all. I got a whole bunch of them. About to go drop these joints off. All through Chicago. Be there, be there, be there. Be there. Be there. Come help your boy. For real. I expect to see you there. I expect to see you there. Feet to the pavement. Feet to the pavement. Now, uh, as always, before I let you go, it's the same thing I must let you know, and that's stay cautious, stay vigilant, stay looking over your shoulder for them goddamn informants. Yeah. Whoever knew that that would be the realest shit I could have told you. Let's get ready to get up out of here like Homeland Security coming, y'all. Let's get up out of here like Homeland Security coming. His queen always. Sharon Monet, RSK supporter. Cassandra, Michelle, that's it, that song. YT24, Chantel Finest. Latanya Walker, Small Fry. Trevor, Jeff Ski, Look Mac. Mark, Basic Mom, Keith Boo, Yellow Michelle, Mrs. Enterprise, 
DJ Tyson. No love, beauty, a joy. Guys in control. Juicy love, big red six nine. Segregation, peace making. Oh, so lovely one. Lady Diva, Lady T. What is the meaning? Stolen futures. I want these kids not dreaming. Sweeter says, go, go. What the world? Yeah, and shout out to the vice president of this shit, T-Baby, and Miss Parker for keeping me warm in the inside. You too, d Ferris. Keith Booth, see some of this this weekend. Can't wait. Literally. <laughs> yeah, man. We're going to get out here in these streets, man. We both got shit to do. You both got shit to do. It's already people in town. People already up here. They about to help me go pass these flyers out. Probably bring my Porsche out for a little second. Roll that motherfucker around. You know. And I'm gone. Make sure you book your room, man. Book your rooms. August 20th to the 22nd, we'll be stepping. 111 South Michigan Avenue. All the rest of the stuff is on the thumbnail. Everybody be safe. Everybody be safe. Yeah. If you get a raffle tickets, get your raffle tickets. If you donate it, uh, you're automatically included in the raffle. Don't even worry about it. Okay? Yeah. Off to the streets I go. Footwork, 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 footwork. All right, y'all. Let's do this shit. And uh, don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. Just remember this. The rally goes on with or without Deboski. Strict orders. The rally goes on with or without Deboski. Strict orders. Real shit. Real shit. Don't let me down. I ain't going to let y'all down. We all in this shit together. Enterprise, we all we got. We 